Hello, everyone. Good morning, Ghana, and good evening. Good morning. Good evening from Japan. My name is Stefan Diaz, and I am the marketing director of the Miss International Beauty Pageant. And to continue with our wonderful interview last week, today we have a very special guest. She is the one who is coming to Japan for the 60th Miss International Beauty Pageant. And uh, she was crowned last year as first princess of the Miss Tourism Ghana beauty pageant. And she is automatically Miss International Ghana 2021 and will be representing the beautiful country of Ghana in the 60th Miss International. Please welcome Miss Jennifer Deku. Hi everyone, I'm Miss Jennifer Deku. Nice to meet everyone. Thank you so much, Jennifer, for giving us the time to do this live. And I'm sure your fans have been waiting already because we have a little bit of technical problem a while ago. So it's totally fine. But since we are here right now, Jennifer, please tell us something more about yourself aside from, you know, the ones that you have. Well, let's start from the very basic ones. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm Jennifer Deku, popularly known as Nuna. That's my LA name. I'm a Voltarian from Anyaku in a Volta region. It's actually an island, let's say a peninsula sort of, because it's surrounded um, by the Ketalagu. Most of it is surrounded by the Ketalagu, and a small part is connected to the mainland. So, yeah, but I've lived all my life in Accra. That's the capital city of Ghana. I'm a registered midwife, at the same time, a pageant queen. <laughs> Yes, that's a really, really impressive, Jennifer, because um, coming from, is it how small is the island where you were from? Anyako. Yes. How small is it? How how many people were there? Are there? We are not that many, but I think it's a 3,000 square kilometers or something. It's okay. not really that big. So... so Pardon, pardon my ignorance because I am not well versed with Ghana geography. So we have an island somewhere in the Indian Ocean, and that's where you're from. And then you moved to Accra, and that's where you have spent most of your life. And you became a registered midwife and now a beauty queen. I was actually born in Accra. Oh, you were born in Accra. Okay, I'm sorry. Pardon. Yeah. I was born in Accra. And so, like, I've gone to my hometown, like, twice because I was born and raised in Accra, schooled in Accra. But I just went back to my hometown, that's the Volta region, to study in my secondary school education because mm -hmm. I wanted to travel and go and see my people and learn my culture. That's amazing. It's, uh, it's also great because um, based on my interview with Emanuela last week, um, she told me about this great platform that you have at the Miss Tourism Ghana Beauty Pageant because you have the opportunity to raise more awareness about your country, about your culture, and about your people. Because, you know, Ghana geographically may look small, but actually it's a very diverse country with so many um, different kinds of people, different kinds of uh, ethnic culture and background. Um, please share us something about yours. Okay, um, with Ghana, everyone knows Ghana is a culture based country where um, there are lots of ethnic groups, maybe over 100 ethnic groups in Ghana. Mm. But the major ones are the Akan, the Ewe, the Dagbani, and the Gans. Those are the popular ones, you find them everywhere. And then we speak over 70 languages. Wow. But, yeah, we have seven, over 70 languages, and but the common ones you usually speak is English and Akan, that's three. Then maybe you hear Ghana and Ewe somewhere because there's no just one language for Ghanaians to speak. So oh, most Ghanaians, tell me again, one more time, what was the name of the language that you said a while ago, aside from English, English and? The popular language. And then we have Ewe, we have Ga. Sorry, I think we have a little bit of a problem right now, but uh, um, she'll be back um, in a short while. Just to give you a background about our Miss International Ghana 2021, Jennifer is actually a registered midwife, and currently she is also teaching um, to all those aspiring midwives um, in uh, Accra. And uh, well, 
I hope she will be back in a short while. And uh, she uh, participated in the Miss Tourism Ghana beauty pageant last year, um, placing as first runner up or first princess. And being first princess has given her the ticket to represent her beautiful country and the Miss International beauty pageant, which will be held this year. Um, she will be back in a short while. I would like just want to say hi to all the people here who have already sent their comment. Myohan says, Jennifer Deku, she'll be back in a short while, guys. Please um, be patient. Drew Francisco says, hi, Jennifer and Stefan. Thank you very much. Rail Jimenez Barrio says, hi, everyone from Cebu, Philippines. Thank you very much, uh, Rail. Hey, we're back here. I was just reading some comments. Sorry, but it's totally fine. Um, Firefly in Ghana is not really that strong enough, so. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. Well, I mean, like we we all have problems here and there sometimes. Um, as, as a matter of fact, last week I also had a live interview with a different uh, organization, and I just disappeared. <laughs> like, <laughs> and I'm in Japan, right? <laughs> yeah. I'm in Japan. <laughs> but anyway, Jennifer, you were talking about the diversity and the uh, lots of cultures and lots of ethnic groups in Ghana, and you did mention to me one language. And I just want to learn a little bit about Ghana language. How do you say hello in one of your major languages aside from English? We normally say wisdom in my language. We say wisdom, wisdom meaning like welcome or something. It's like it's something we normally say for people. It's a form of saying hello. So instead of saying hello, you can be like oh wisdom in my language. Oh, wisdom. Wazon, Wazon. Yeah, Wazon, yeah. <laughs> oh, in, Shri language, in Shri language, you can say Akwaba. Akwaba. Yes. <laughs> Wazon. Yeah. <laughs> I also learned, actually, I was learning more about Japan, and last year I watched a movie where they call someone Deku. It sounds like the meaning of Deku in Japan means a useless person, but it can also be Deku, which means someone who can achieve a lot. But the funny thing is, in my language, Deku means palm fruit. Deku. <laughs> okay, that's quite interesting. <laughs> yeah. Well, so anyway. <laughs> I'm sorry to interrupt you, but um, let's uh, go to the history of you um, uh, entering beauty pageants because uh, being a registered midwife and teaching midwifery as well must be very, very tough. And right now with the pandemic and all that, of course, the hospitals are um, packed with patients um, may or may be infected by the virus. So it must be double hard for you right now. Um, what made you decide to join um, the Miss Tourism Ghana, um, even though you are already um, a successful professional um, in your own way? The reason I joined Miss Tourism Ghana was I was I used to be the typical Ghanaian. We only travel domestically because of work or school. We have this boarding school where you can choose the region you want to school in because boarding school is a main thing for us. We want to go to boarding school in the senior high school. So um, it's either you're traveling because of boarding school or school or you're traveling because of work or to see a family member. But we hardly travel because we want to know our own country and understand and experience our own country. So then I started and I was like, what would make me know more about Ghana? Then I saw Mr. For me, I love how I love to meet a lot of people. I love to experience new cultures. So I was like, let me go for this. And one thing about this organization is I'm an Ewe, meaning I'm from Vulta region. And when I got to the competition, it wasn't just you're not supposed to represent your own country, your own region. You're supposed to represent another region. And I was representing Western North. Volta region is southeast. And Western North was all the way 
<laughs> Absolute opposite. <laughs> But all the way, I didn't know anything about them. I had to learn their language, a little bit of their language, and then I had to learn their culture and what they are good in agriculture and all that. So that's how I realized and got to know more about the Western North people of Ghana. Western North, which means that is close to which country? Ivory Coast. Ivory Coast, so yeah, so it's a little bit different there because maybe because Ivory Coast or Cote d'Ivoire is French speaking, so there must be yeah. a little bit of French influence in that area as well. Exactly, exactly. Wow, that's quite interesting. And now, did you, did you even um, think about um, making it to the top three or winning the crown, or did you aim for that, or you you just joined because you just wanted to have fun and learn about your culture? That was the main point. I also joined because I wanted to do something for myself and inspire other people. Because I believe being a midwife, working around women, I've been given the power somehow to inspire people, like to influence people in one way or the other. So mm -hmm. I thought, okay, if I join this and then I make it to the top three, I could be able to give someone hope or someone inspiration that they could do something in spite of being a health professional that you are so bounded but you can go everywhere yes that's true i also think that Anna shared to me last week um with her being uh involved with the uh, um virus <laughs> I love yeah. that. because that's what her research is all about <laughs> um yeah um being part of the um in the field of medicine is uh, quite uh, challenging. And uh, right now with the, with the crown in your head and the title, you can actually have more influence towards younger people. And uh, well, to make the long story short, now that you have the title and you'll be representing Miss International, uh, uh, you'll be representing Ghana in the Miss International Beauty Pageant, um, has your aim or your goal changed from there? And then now you you think about the fact that you will be representing not just your own region, not just your region, not just your your, your local your culture, but you know the entire diverse country of Ghana. I think as a dream country, because um, not many girls or not many health workers would think they could break out of their boundaries because when you're in health or medicine people think yeah you, you can't do a lot of things mm. they feel you are too um book sort of they think you can't do a lot of entertainment so i feel being a miss tourism ghana representing ghana for um miss international in japan i believe my desires have been changed because japan itself is a culture-based country. I love their culture. And with that, I can be able to experience Japan and learn some, because the way Japan mixes their culture with their modernization is very, very amazing. So I feel I could learn something and bring it back to my country to share it. That is actually wonderful. Also the aim of the Miss International Beauty Pageant as a, every, every delegate that we have here um, who come to Japan, we don't consider them as Com, um, as competitors, you know, it's you're you're like the delegate. We call as much as we want. We want to to think about the competition. We don't want to say that you are contestants because when you say contestants, you're just you're just competing against each other. But we try to call everyone as delegates because you are here as delegates, as ambassadors, representing your country, and you learn from each other. You are not competing against each other but you are learning from each other so that one because you are not going to live in japan forever so eventually you'll just go back to your country and then whatever you have learned here in, the, in our pageant you know you could you could use them um in your country and for sure you'll come back as a better individual when when after you have joined the miss international beauty pageant exactly because I, can, I feel Ghana and Japan relates in one way. Japan is covered by forestry, 60% sort of, and Ghana is also covered by forestry, 60%. So I feel if Japan could use their tradition at the same time, modernization, 
And I feel Ghana too can also be the same. We could learn from each other. Exactly. That is a really wonderful mindset because uh, not so many people actually think that way. Um, and uh, here in Japan itself, um, we have uh, we have many um, scholars and uh, teachers from Ghana who are um, involved in the community. And uh, just even here in where, where I live, I know at least three uh, Ghanaian teachers who are teaching English in elementary school. And then they are um, introducing your culture to the young Jap Japanese kids. And uh, yes, uh, it's a good thing that um, this, uh, instead of um, highlighting our differences, it's really great to actually like see the common ground and check out some similarities that we have in our country. Like what you said, Ghana has like almost 60 to 70% of forestry and Japan also has the same thing. So how can you actually like manage both modernization and also preserving nature is also one thing that you'll be learning. And then you will definitely see it hand, um, in real life once you're here and you will be surprised of what you're going to, <laughs> what you're going I to do. <laughs> I can't wait. Yeah, because every year I remember, um, because I usually take charge of the African delegation when I pick them up from the airport and the moment the girls from Africa arrive in Japan and then they see how um, the, the, the modern pavement and how the, um, um, how orderly everything is. <laughs> they always say like, how oh, I wish I'm going to, um, I remember last year Miss Zambia was saying like, um, I really wish I could introduce this to my to my people and uh, yeah that's uh, basically one of the aims and hopefully when you when you're here already you know you'll be seeing all those things not just not just to be so overwhelmed about the about the modern stuff but also with the tradition and with the hospitality of the Japanese people um while we are waiting for Jennifer I'm sorry I think Jennifer's signal has stopped a little bit, but it's time now to actually share some uh, comments here. We have Suzanne Carmen saying, hope she, win she won, or maybe she hope she wins. She will be the first African who will win in Miss International. Thank you so much for that comment. Suomo no Yango says, yeah, hey, she is beautiful. Thank you so much, Suoma, for that wonderful comment. Nana here says, yeah, Jennifer making Ghana proud. You go, girl. Yes, we are already very proud of her. Um, please pardon us, guys, if she just disappeared for a while. You know, sometimes the signal is not so good, but she'll be back in a short while. And uh, once again, here's a message from Suoma. We supporting you, Ghana. Louds of love from Namibia. That's great, Namibia. Here, welcome back, Jennifer. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? I think I have to send a Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm here. So um, I was just reading some of the comments here you? while you were gone a while ago. <laughs> um, there is a comment here from Cambodia saying hello from Cambodia hello. and a good friend of mine, a former staff hello. of International Makoto says, Steve, hey, you know, just, he was just uh, trying to make th this, this uh, lively, you know, he's, yeah. He's a very funny guy. <laughs> and funny. we have a message here from Emanuela herself. All the best, Jenny. Make us proud. Thank you, Iman. Thank you so much. I have noted this uh, the sisterhood among the Miss Tourism Ghana, um, not just the winners, but the contestant itself. It's so amazing. Um, you're really so close, and it seems that you are really helping each other, which is very related to our um, motto in Miss International, which is cheer all women. It seems like you are really living up to that. Yeah, exactly. I think it's, it's something about Ghanaians, even though we are different, we have different ethnic groups, 
when we see each other somewhere, we just bond like we are sisters. Maybe I might be called the who, someone might be called uh, Nina, but because you're all from the same place, we just bond. So we miss terrorism. It teaches us sisterhood. It teaches us like family. We are like a family. And Mrs. Dolphin is like a mother to all of us. So she's like a mom. Like a mom to everyone. Exactly. <laughs> well, um, what is like so far? Um, let's uh, leave a little behind of the pageant stuff, but uh, let's go to your profession a little bit. What has been the most challenging part of your profession um, so far? Being a midwife, I realized um, most Ghanaian youth they don't really know about their reproductive health. Mm. So um, you would have to explain things to them and then sometimes they'll have to come to you and be like, what is this? What is that? And I realize a lot of us don't really know much about reproductive health, especially mm. the rural areas. You get more children getting pregnant, more of them contracting STIs and all that. And I want to, as one of my projects, to help them understand and be knowledgeable about their own reproductive health and how to go about it. And now that you are a woman yourself, you can actually reach out to them and young girls will come to you. Yeah, I've started that. And uh, hopefully, you know, once you are already um, here in Japan and uh, aside from your duties as Miss International Ghana, um, I really hope that your, um, um, your thrust or your, your project to reach out to as many young people as possible to know more about their um, to know more about the reproductive health and also to be aware of their uh, responsibilities as well as uh, as young as Adults. individuals and then young teenager and then becoming I know trans um, transitioning into become young adults you know at least. Um, being a beauty queen yourself, I think you have the the opportunity and the platform to be uh, an influential um, part of the society or influential person. Exactly, being the health worker and having the crown is a perfect combo to do that. Yeah, I know. That's the reason why. This is what I always tell a lot of people about beauty pageant because you know some people think that it is outdated and it's useless, but some they just don't realize that in some countries, in some places around the world, you know, the crown and the title itself could actually give a positive role model, and at the same time, you'll be, you become a good influence towards the younger generation. Exactly. Because and being the beauty pageant comes with a lot of responsibility, so. Yeah. It's not just about getting the car and sitting down. It's about doing yeah. something, yeah. acting. And you can always tell them, aside from the crown, you are actually a professional midwife. You know, you're a registered midwife. It's not like yeah. you're a queen. You know, you, you have a profession yourself. So there you yeah. go. <laughs> <laughs> but um, since we have we don't have time, and I really, really appreciate um Jennifer um spending this early morning to us and um Guys, please do follow Jennifer on her Instagram account and also Miss Tourism Ghana. Um, we have 10 more months to go until Miss International Beauty Pageant. And please keep on supporting all of our delegates and officially our Miss International Ghana 2021. Jennifer Deku here. Thank you so much. Thank please you. Hi to Delphine and say hi to Emanuela for me. Sure, sure. Say hi to everyone, and I can't wait to meet everyone in Japan. Thank you so much. Goodbye, Jennifer. Goodbye. 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 <laughs>